Interrogator Forlax reporting en route to Hive Octavian as part of an ongoing investigation into possible Xenos and heretical activities in the Underhive. My inquiries have led me to Hive Sector 826 Gamma, known by the general population as Blackford Abyss. I have dispatched my trusted agent, Adept Promius, a powerful telepath, into Blackford, escorted by one of the more trustworthy local gangs, the Velvet Privateers. Fear of my inquisitorial authority, as well as a modest payment, should be enough to secure their loyalty. Adept Promius is primarily tasked with investigating an abandoned dome known as Serpent Crag, from which I have intercepted many disturbing reports of foul Xenos infestation. The survival of Promius is paramount. Faith in the Emperor guarantees victory. This is an escort mission. So the Velvet Privateers are going to have to escort Adept Promius to the opposite table edge. Uh, the Dawn of Eternity, who are a gene stealer cult, the foul Xenos scum. Uh, must try and stop them by taking Adept Promius out of action. Uh, so in this one, there are no bottle checks. So you've got to keep fighting till the fighting's done. Round one, priority phase. So the black dice is the Velvet Privateers, yellow is the Dawn of Eternity, and Velvet Privateers take it, so they'll go first. First up is Jax, the standard tech ganger. He's gonna climb up the ladder, and he declares a shoot action against Villainous Bloodstrain. The Gene Stealer Champion, wielding a heavy stubber with his third arm and overwatch, so he can overwatch the heavy weapon because of his third arm and counts as suspenses pretty much. So he's got three plus BS, but he's gonna be at long range and soft cover, so it's fives to hit. And he's missed completely and jammed as well. Perfect start for the Gene Stealers. But he's not jammed. Nice reliable weapon, the heavy stubber, but he has missed. Just impacted on the surface. So Jax lines up, hotshot last gun, BS 3s, minus 2 for hard cover, so he's got 5s to hit as well. And he has hit. So at least someone's got the Ryan. Sent a mass shot right to the midsection. Villamus does have a psychic familiar, so once per round, he can avoid any shots on a 3 plus. And he's failed. So the psychic familiar is not earning his paycheck this week. Threes to wound, not wounded, so he's pinned. Ducks down behind the statue. Vorjax, the neophyte specialist, has a long rifle. Four plus to hit, minus one for soft cover, so it's fives again. He's shooting back against Jax. Tip for tap. He has hit with knockback but it has once again jammed. Not having much luck here, but not jammed. So, although they're terribly maintained weapons, they have brought a lot of ammo. Threes to wound, he has wounded. Five plus save with his body glove and mesh, not saved because of the minus one armor penetration. So it is an injury roll and straight to seriously injured. First blood to the Gene Stealers. Bosh. No falling damage, because it's not above three inches falling distance. Anything below three inches doesn't suffer damage. And Grimaldus passes his nerve check and doesn't break. Up next, we have Helicon, the giant lumbering arachne rig. Absolute monstrosity when it comes to shooting this fella. Heavy las carbine, plasma gun, rad gun. If he stands still, he can shoot twice as well. Not the best BS as far as Advanced Sars is concerned, but basically, he's just an enormous walking gun platform. Good luck. So with his first action, he moves forward. 
and he's going to use his twin link heavy last carbine fives to hit against Vorjax. so absolute tip for tat you shoot me i shoot you and he's missed completely missed six times if that had hit untold damage would have been caused <laughs> Gorkon, the neophyte with a shotgun, solid and scatter. First action move, second action move. So he gets behind cover, behind that hideous Xenos growth. Delacroix, the tech, hotshot last pistol. He's going to open the door. Part of a group activation with Raldoran and Promius. Having opened the door, he's just going to single move forward towards cover. Raldoran, move, move, again up to cover. And Promius, who's only got move three, moves forward twice as well. He's quite a powerful psychic of the telepathy discipline. And the mission is to get him off the board on the other side. So if he gets off the board, the Velvet Privateers win. If he doesn't get off the board, then the Dawn of Eternity are going to take it. He does have a Displacer field, however, so he's not going to be the easiest guy in the world to kill. 4 plus invulnerable save. If he does get hit, he'll be teleported the strength value in inches in a random direction. Ooh, it's the Nightmare that stalks. One of the Outlaw Brutes that was featured in White Dwarf. Super fast, move 7, and even faster now, so his move is increased by 2. So he's got move nine effectively. So single move, nine inches. Next move, another nine inches, 18 inch move. He does have clamber as well, so he can go up and down walls as if they're nothing. Very nimble. Could have been a ballerina. And that might put him within charge range next turn if they get priority. Balderon, the Augmech. Advanced our champion, basically. Plasma Cannon is going to move first action to the top of the ladder. With his suspenses, it means he can still shoot his heavy weapon. A very useful, if expensive, piece of kit. Three plus to hit against Vorjax. So 2 plus to hit, but minus 1 for soft cover, and he has hit twice, it's on low power, so he does hit twice with rapid fire, strength 6, toughness 3, both have wounded by the skin of the teeth, no saving throw with his hazard suit, so it's straight to injury roll, ooh, skull and 3 flesh wounds, so blown 3 arms off, and then the head. Out of action, and he got a hand injury, so minus one WS, although for a sniper, close combat is hardly his forte anyway, so not too bad. Rictus, the Aberrant. He's going to group activate with Cairo, and move forward, single move, and open the door. You are one ugly mother feather. Cairo Starchild, the leader, Cult Alpha, he's got a gunfighter, three auto pistols and a chainsaw, so he can shoot all three pistols at once. He's going to move, move, and get in behind some cover, along with his little friendly psychic familiar. So yeah, he can lay down quite a barrage of fire with his three auto pistols, and ably protected by his young little friend. So that's the end phase of round one, Jack's recovery roll. He has recovered, so he's got a flesh wound. Flips over. And that's it, priority roll. Privateers had it last time. Get a three this time. And three for the Dawn of Eternity as well, so they will get it because it's a tie. So Cairo Starchild, the Cult Alpha. Ah, he uses his first action to double back on himself, the old switcheroo. Fools everyone with his tricksterish manoeuvring. And he's going to be just in range, about 11 inches 
away from the downed form of Jax having just recovered. Yet to jump to his feet and it's three auto pistols, gunfighter, all guns blazing, threes to hit, hit all three times, one jam, which is not jam, but doing very well on their ammo rolls. So he has hit four times, so it's threes to wound, and that's three wounds. Four plus save because of his body glove and mesh. Two have not saved though. Usually very good save, the old Bansars, but no, injury roll, two in Oh my word, double skull. He is toast. Yeah, don't get much more dead than that. Out of action, miss next game. Balderon has failed his nerve check and he breaks and flees. Only three inches. That's him out of commission for the rest of this round. See if he can rally later and get the elusive experience point. Gorkon, the neophyte with a shotgun. He's going to single move up to behind that debris. Getting a bit of cover and do a bit of scavenging while you're at it. And he's going to take a short range solid shot with his shotgun at Helicon. Might do some damage, but also just to pin him, I'm assuming. He has hit. Not out of ammo for once. Impressive. Strength 4, toughness 4, so 4 has wounded. Heavy carapace, 3 plus save. Yeah, it's hard to get through that one. Basically wearing the same armor plating as a land raider. But he has pinned him. The multi-armed behemoth is felled until he jumps back to his feet and returns fire. So he's up. So at that range, he's going to go with the plasma gun, which is plus two at short range, which will cancel out the hard cover that Gorkon is hiding behind. So it's going to be four plus to hit, rapid fire one. So he has just hit just for the once. Strength five, toughness three, so it's threes to wound. Wounded just... No saving throw, gets straight through his hazard suit. Two damage on the plasma gun, so it'll be two injury dice. Seriously injured, and seriously injured. <laughs> Villamous Bloodstrain leaps back to his feet. Heavy stubber in hand, seeking retribution. And he spies the little group over yonder. Four plus to hit, three plus BS, minus one for soft cover. He's hit four times, and he's going to spread that around. Two on Raldoran, one on Delacroix, one on Promius. Two wounds on Raldoran. So he's going to have a 5 plus save. Saved one of them, so he's lost a wound. Two wounds on Raldoran, so he's down to one. Single shot on Delacroix, and has wounded. 5 to save again. Saved. So his snazzy armor does come through in the end. Strength 4, toughness 4, so it's 4 to wound on Promius. He's still wounded. Great round of shooting. 4 plus unmodified save, just saved, and he's passed his nerves of steel, so he's not pinned. So it's a strength 4 weapon, so the displacer field will move him 4 inches in a random direction, dropping him just in front of that big pile of junk. Ralderon, down to one wound, but still in the game, leaps to his feet. And swiftly legs it away from the nightmare that stalks, who's ominously lurking within charge range for next turn. And here he goes, the nightmare that stalks is charging. 
Ooh, five, so that's three inches. That gives him a 12 inch charge. With clamber, he can climb those walls as if they were laddered, so it's just two and a half inches up. Four across, two and a half inches down. Yep, he's easily gonna be within charge range of Delacroix. Who, upon the sight of the foul beast, leaps to his feet. Never has a pistol looked so underpowered. So, two attacks on the jaws in yellow, one on the tail. One hit with the jaws, one hit with the tail. Strength four on both, toughness three, so it's threes to wound. Both wounded. However, there's a lovely save. Delacroix does have a five plus save, it's just minus one. One has saved, so one got through. And the injury roll. Yeah, still seriously injured. And it's going to be a coup de grace. So he can't consolidate, but he has stomped his head into the ground. Out of action, no long-term effect, and Ralderon has passed his nerve check. Promius spies the foul, wretched underhive monster, and casts hallucinations. Five plus on his willpower, he has succeeded. So one to two broken, three to four, lose control, five to six normal, he is broken. And flees over the other side of the wall. With insanity though, he will remain insane until he snaps out of it, which can only be done on the act normally roll, so he will still be insane next turn. And with his second action, he's going to move forward, attempting to get as close as possible to the end of the board. His objective is to get off the other side. Rictus, the Aberrant, is going to double move up next to Gorkon, lend an assist on the recovery roll. Also putting himself within potential charge range of some of the juicier targets. And that's the end of round two, so the end phase. Gorkon getting assisted, so he will get two recovery rolls and one is a flesh wound, knocking him down to toughness two. Flips over, so he's just pinned now. Rally check for Balderon has succeeded, so he's back in business, and the nightmare that stalks also rallies, but is still insane, so I'll have to roll on his next activation to see the effects of the insanity. Round three, priority phase, and the Velvet Privateers take it. Balderon. Activates first, keen to show that he's not the whimpering coward who flees at the first sign of trouble. Turns and is immediately overwatched by Villamus Bloodstrain. He's not going to have a shot blasted at him in anger without firing back first. He has hit four times. Strength four, toughness three, so it's threes to wound. Two wounds. He does have two wounds, but we'll see if he can save one. Five plus to save. One saved, so he has lost a wound and is pinned. That also interrupts his activation, so he won't get to continue his turn. Arvaron is Cairo's psychic familiar. He's going to single move forward and open the door with his second activation. One of the useful aspects of having pets. They can open doors for you, make your life a whole lot easier. Cairo Starchild, the Cult Alpha, is going to move forward. And again, all guns blazing. He's going to unleash Merry Hell with his three auto pistols into the hulking form of Helicon.
3 plus to hit, no cover, long range, so it's 3s to hit. All hit, and he's hit 4 times, putting 1 on Helicon and 3 on Raldoran, attempting to take out the leader. 2 wounds, 1 on each, and it's 4s to save for Raldoran, the yellow dice, 3s for Helicon, the black dice. Helicon has saved, Raldoran hasn't, he was down to his last wound, so it will be an injury roll. Flesh wound, just a flesh wound, so toughness 2. But he lives to fight another day. Tangled mess of bodies on the floor. Chromius, the adept. Single move forward, get behind some cover. And now he's going to attempt to cast a mind control on Villamus, which will allow him to take control of Villamus's mind and use him as some kind of flesh puppet, forcing him to blast his own troops to smithereens with his heavy stubber. Not very nice at all. So it's 5 plus willpower check, which he has failed. But because he's a sanctioned psyker, he can reroll one failed weird roll per game. So he's going to reroll that. And this time he's passed, so he has taken control of the foul Xenos mind. So he's going to force Villamus to unleash a firestorm of carnage onto his old friend Rictus. Gork on lurking just in the background there as well, so it's threes to hit. He has hit four times and he's going to spread it as well. Two to Rictus, two to Gork on. Toughness 2 on Gorkon, toughness 4 on Rictus. So it's one wound on each. No save for Gorkon, one for Rictus, but it's a 6 plus and he has failed. So Rictus loses a wound and is pinned. Injury roll for Gorkon and it's a serious injury. So again, just as he recovered, he's back face down, bleeding into the gutter. Some people just can't catch a break nowadays, can they? Gorkon seriously injured. Rictus doesn't break, however. Takes more than that to scare an aberrant. Rictus leaps to his feet. But without a gun and unable to charge, he's just going to move forward towards Promius, hoping to be able to smash him into a bloody pulp next turn. Helicon the Arachne Rig also clambers to its feet. Must be quite easy when you've got 17 arms. And he is not a happy chap. Going with the Plasma Gun on low power. Short range but hard cover on Rictus. So it's forced to hit. And he's hit once. So one Plasma Gun blast to the flank. Toughness 4, strength 5, so it's wounded, only had one wound left, 2 damage, so it will be 2 injury dice. And that's a flesh wound and out of action, so he has been sculled. Literally sculled, it's a head injury, so minus 1 intelligence and willpower. He wasn't the most intelligent fella before anyway, but yeah, he's going to have trouble tying his shoelaces now. The nightmare that Storks activates. He is still insane. And this time he is controlled by the opposing team. So the Velvet Privateers can control him this turn. And they're going to move him out of cover and drop him right in the open in front of a waiting Meltagun in the hands of the Privateers leader, Raldoran. Could be bad news for the big fella. Raldoran leaps to his feet, and it's going to be close range with a melter gun, so if he hits and wounds, the beast is going to be glooped. Twos to hit, BS2, short range plus one, doesn't do anything, no cover. So it's going to be two plus to hit, anything but a one. <laughs> Famous last words, missed and jammed. Four plus on the ammo roll, and he has failed, it is scarce ammo. So the Melter Gun is scrapped. 
Gorkon, the shotgun wielding seriously injured neophyte, is going to crawl towards his fearless leader Cairo in an attempt to get an assist on his recovery. But he's not within an inch, so he won't be able to get any assists. Cairo wasn't that bothered about assisting him anyway, he's got bigger fish to fry. Round three, end phase. So Gorkon, all by himself, tries to recover. And succeeds! Who needs help anyway? Flesh wound, so he's down to toughness one. And it's the round four priority phase. Black for the privateers, yellow for the dawn. One and one! But dawn of eternity get it once again because they didn't have it last time. On a tie they get it. Villamous blood strain springs into action, moves forward with his third arm. It does count as suspenses, so he can move and fire. So he's moving forward to get a good view of Promius. All right, the gloves are off. Time to hit hard. Three plus to hit. And he has hit four times, so four times right into the face of Promius. Strength four, toughness four, so it's fours to wound. Three wounds. He's got that four plus unmodified displacer field. And two have saved. He's passing nerves of steel again, so he is still on his feet. But one wound has got through. And he's going to be bounced twice, four inches each time. Ends up nicely behind a little bit of cover. But he is directly next to that slimy cesspool filth goop water hazard. Raldoran group activates with Helicon and lucky find. So his melter gun is automatically reloaded at the cost of one action. So again, twos to hit, rinse and repeat. Anything but a one and this time he has hit. It's gonna be three plus to wound, strength eight, toughness five. And he's wounded on a five, melter, close range. They'll be scraping bits of the nightmare that stalks out of the carpet for months. Out of action, no long-term effect. Yeah. Helicon, the Arachne rig with his first action, he's going to turn and fire. Remember that Arachne rigs can shoot twice as basic actions, so he'll be able to shoot this and again if he misses. He's going with the plasma gun first, low power, twos to hit because it's short range, plus two to hit. Anything but a one? He has hit, but it's jammed. So it's five plus on the plasma gun and scarce. It is out of ammo, but it has hit once. However, the psychic familiar is gonna use his omen of fortune and Cairo has avoided the shot completely. With his second action though, he will also unleash hell with his twin link heavy las carbine. Fours to hit, three rapid fire dice, three plus to hit because it's short range. And he's hit four times, one jam, but because it's twin linked, he can re-roll any of the ammo dice he's re-rolling. And this time it's rapid fire two, so in total rapid fire five. So five hits, strength four, toughness three. He does have two wounds, that's four wounds. Five plus save with mesh armor. Ooh, just the one save. So with the two wounds, that's going to be two injury dice. One seriously injured, one flesh wound. So it's not looking good at all for the dawn of eternity. Serious injury. Gorkon on the floor, passes his nerve check and doesn't break. Gorkon, fresh from proving he's not a coward, leaps to his feet, down to toughness one, and he's gonna take a shot at Promius with his solid round shotgun. Short range, soft cover, so it's fours, but he's using crossfire, which means if he's shooting at someone who's already been shot at, which he has by the heavy stubber, then it automatically hits. So he has hit automatically. 
Strength 4, Toughness 4. He has Wounded. 4 plus to save on the Displacer field. Failed! He's failed. Down to his last wound, so it is an injury roll. Flesh wound and seriously injured. So Promius is in deep trouble. And because he's next to the sludge pool, it's an initiative check to try and not fall in. 5 plus initiative. Oh, 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 failed! Failed just on a 4. So he's seriously injured face down in the slime, so he will sink to his doom. And at that, the Dawn of Eternity take it. That is victory for the Gene Stealers. They've managed to prevent Promius from getting across the board. His investigation will have to wait for now. Interrogator Forlax will not be happy about this. If you like what we do here, we do now have a Patreon. Very snazzy. Link in the description. Any Patreon members will get early access to all of our videos and content. If you want to sign up, the link's in the description. Other than that, like and subscribe, heretics.